All right. So now, welcome man. everyone. It's again T T S. I can't even fucking talk today. T S H One Podcast. Again, you know, you got your two favorite people. You got Dennis and David. The Double D's. No, I'm joking. That was a joke. Hey, they call me Double D at work, man. It's crazy. Do they? Really? Yeah. Yep, Double yeah. D. Those are awesome, the initials awesome. that are up on my gloves. Oh, okay. So, uh, how's your day been today? Fabulous, man. Fabulous. Awesome, awesome. Yours? Yeah. It's been okay. Um, dryer died. Got to see what's going on with the dryer. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah, dryer won't work, so I don't know what's going on with the dryer. I have a guy for that. Do you? You want to come look at it? I'll send you his info. Okay, awesome. That'd be great, because we really need someone to look (laughs) at that dryer. (laughs) Right. I don't know if it's a fuse or electrical wire or something. I don't know. But But, um, anyway, tonight we have a great guest. We have Dan and Jamie from... Cherry Capital Sh- Shadow Seekers. I can't even fucking talk. I'm telling you. Um, <laughs> tonight. Uh, so I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring them on. We're gonna have a great time. We're gonna have some laughs. We're gonna talk about paranormal stuff, evidence, stuff like that. You know, the usual right. spiel. So let's bring them on, see what they gotta say today, you know. Not joking, Dan. <laughs> oh. All right, guys. Welcome. Welcome, welcome guys, welcome. <laughs> welcome welcome thank you for having us yes <laughs> yes <laughs> so uh, away from you <laughs> so uh how, how did your team get started man like did you have an experience in paranormal did you just like the shows bring you together and you're just like you know what let's go out there and try this or well um yeah, I started researching 12 years ago, and okay. it was, I, I, I was involved in a bad marriage, and, you know, I, oh, I yeah. was part of the fire department for five years and couldn't get by the written exam, so, you know, I figured I'd, you know, I want to get into public safety, so I started studying the paranormal. Didn't even okay. tell my family for until five years later, until I started reaching out to other teams in the area and getting a cold shoulder because they didn't think I did any type of research before joining up with the team or anything like that. But um, I uh, I got in and I, I came in as a skeptic. I didn't even believe in the stuff. Um, when I was 18, I had a buddy of mine come back from downstate saying, hey, man, I, I went in the cemetery and got some paranormal stuff in the cemetery. I'm like, I don't believe you, dude. You know, you, you, you're, you're talking gibberish to me. Like, let's take some pictures in your house. And they did, and they, uh, my mouth hit the floor. They, I became a believer because there was a face in my room. Didn't even know that there was anything in my room. I slept okay. on the couch for a good month in the living room. I wouldn't sleep in my bedroom because the oh. face was in my bedroom, so... <laughs> so, I mean, I thought of that incident, so I'm like, maybe I want to come become a paranormal investigator, and that's when I started reaching out and got in cold shoulder, and like I said, I know the reasons why, and I had no choice but to start my own thing, and then um, right. Jamie, um, a year and a half into it, my first ever investigation was a client residential case down the road from me, where I used to live in Fife Lake, we live now in Traverse City, but, yeah, and, uh, Jamie, you go from there. Oh, I don't know. I've been in the paranormal since I was little. Um, mm. My mother, my mother is Native American, and my sisters are all pretty spiritual. So it was, it was like a thing around our house. This camera's stupid. I'm gonna stay here. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a thing around our house. We we actually lived in a haunted house when I was growing up. My my dad's first wife got killed in a tragic car accident, and it was their house. So she would come back, and my mom would just be like, hey, Betty, don't throw a bed on the floor. Hey, Betty, don't do this. And so my mom just made it feel like it was normal. So about three or four years old, I was. my mom says I was having full-blown conversations with her in the, in the dining room in the, in the dark. And she's like, I know you were talking to an adult because there's no three- or four-year-old yeah. going to talk like you were talking. So, you know, I just got in. From there, I hung out in cemeteries. We broke into haunted houses when I was growing up. Um <laughs> I just became Been like, an, yeah, I just, I mean, but there were so many of these abandoned houses in town when we were growing up that I just, we just walked right in. I'm like, it was nothing. And, right. and you know, cause back, back then all you can do is your, your eyes. I mean, we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have 
all this cool audio equipment. We had we had these cameras where it was <laughs> now it's the reverse negative. So we did have these disc cameras where you could reverse the polarity on it and take pictures in reverse. Now they're coming right. back out with them again, but that worked really good back then. We do have one of those. Yeah, <laughs> so we, re- we got the first ge- first generation Nikon. But I it's, had uh, one back then that wasn't. It was that's just what you did on your camera. It was like a setting on your camera. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we got a generation one Nikon, and it's a red negative reverse camera that Joel Myers and he makes incredible cameras. Oh yeah, I got one of those. I got one. Oh, of those. Man, I think I have his upgraded version though. You do. We got we got yeah. the first generation. We're wanting to upgrade and get the second. We're trying to <laughs> finagle our way into getting one, but it's just you know, right now with the with job situation going on right now, so it's, times are tough. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Believe me, um, I'm, I'm, I do have I've a question for oh, both of you. Um. How did you guys come up with the name Cherry Capital Shadow Seek? Jamie, you can explain this better than me. <laughs> no. We he, pretty much found love that night. So so I had Michigan Shadow Seekers, and we were an all-girl team. And he had I had Cherry, Cherry Capital, Capital Paranormal there. Investigations. And uh, we, we were hanging out more and more, and then we were like, hey, there's, like, nobody coming to, you know, nobody was, like, had the time for investigations from his side. Nobody had the time on my side, except for like a couple people. So we're like, let's just go investigate together. Let's just do it together. And then we were on, actually on the Justin. That was when we had the problems of team members. I mean, we weren't having a, a whole lot of participation. And right. that's why we. Uh, but then we got on the Justin Brown show. Yeah, we are on Nickel Man's Alive. He's like, well, what are you going to call yourselves? Because we had this big old long name. It was our first ever podcast. We're like, well, why not Cherry Capital Shadow Seekers? We're from the Cherry Capital, so. That's how we came up with Cherry Capital Shadow Seekers. I mean, Traverse City itself is considered the Cherry Capital of the world, so. Yeah. I mean, and, and especially when you're looking up on Google, you type in Cherry Capital, it would pop up right under Cherry Capital Airport. Oh, it's, it's pretty cool because, I mean, it's a catchy name, and especially yeah. here. There's a lot of shadow figures that are found in a lot of areas up here, and a lot of abandoned places we go to. A lot of those things are in them places. Yeah. Right. Oh, well. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I'm, I'm just sitting in my basement with my haunted objects, so if you guys hear anything that is not my voice, you know why. <laughs> right. that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I, mean, I, got some, I got some of it behind me. The rest of it's over oh, here. And over here. <laughs> Your so, dolls are beautiful. Yeah, there's a there's dolls. There's a German. I'm looking German behind uniform. Yeah. With them. He loves haunted. Oh, yeah. I love haunted objects. Yeah. I, own couple, I own a couple of them myself, and I and own so- over a hundred. <laughs> Well, you'd be a, you'd be a type of guy that you know I should go to with cool. with some inf- with some questions yeah. that I have on my couple yeah. dolls that over a hundred. <laughs> it's, wow. it's really cool though. Sometimes, sometimes I get activity. Sometimes I won't. It's just right. based on the day, time, and everything else that uh, plays <laughs> out. You know, energy wise. So, you okay, know. So, um, how many objects do you have? Well, right in front of me, I have a display case with a bunch of items on a lot of my invest uh, our investigations that we yeah. go on, and I, I try to get permission from the owner of every location that I go to to bring one item home with me that I can put on preserve, right. and I put a description of that item. If I if if the history of that item is unknown, I put the history mm-hmm. of that area, or because I mean we go to a lot of abandoned towns and stuff like that. Yeah. We don't know a lot of the history where that location was at, but I'll put a description of the history of that town and what it did and the roles it played in. And that's what shows its respect. Even if we go to a place where it's in state land and, you know, we're able to bring home any of these items, oh, I ask I permission first. I'm sorry, I'm and um, I'll be able to show my uh, Emma, okay. Emma to you guys. I'm going to go grab her right now. Okay. Okay. My uh, this, this is, is my baby. doll, Emma. You're gonna be put on camera here. Everybody <laughs> he loves this see one. you. This is this is my <laughs> this is my sweetheart. This was handed down to me by my family, and I show her respect. She 
she couldn't stay with anybody else because it caused his brother had her and he didn't like her around. He said that she would smile. She would cause an energy that just wasn't right in his house. See, the weird thing about her is her face is painted. Mm-hmm. And you can tell when Jamie and I yeah. are like in an argument or something, because she'll have that frown like she's worried. Right. But if you get the attention that she wants, you'll see that face glow up and brighten up, and she'll start smiling. You're getting a lot of attention right now. <laughs> <laughs> she's pretty cool. But you see, the thing is, you know, I haven't done a whole lot of research on her to know a gender or a name. Right. I really love to know, and I really love to do a little bit more research on it. I don't have a whole lot of uh, experience in that part of the field, but I'm trying to research as much as I can. Right. But she handed right. down to me by my mom, and it was handed down to her by a possible witch. Yeah, I mean, she's a kitchen witch. She does a lot of um, cooking yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Sorry, and, I was uh, <laughs> and, or, or it was bought in a thrift shop. But okay. all my life, it was, you could, you know that there was some feelings. I was scared of this doll for the longest time in my house. Until yeah. I started studying. There's my and, high chair. There's my high chair right there. <laughs> oh, nice. Yep. It's got a it's got a uh, cross on it. I have to contain the uh and the negative energy that's attached to it. It actually has a Ouija board on the bottom. Really? Yep. I'll wow. show you. Yeah, I'll show you. Watch. Yeah. It's got Ouija boards. Cool. <laughs> yeah. It's got a Ouija board on the bottom. Actually, hold. I actually have like a cross on it that's been blessed by an exorcist. Don't worry about that. I set that off. <laughs> that's not paranormal, people. I set that off. <laughs> that's cool. So, so it's Emma, and I've been studying her. Don't know a whole lot of information, but cool. What's the right people that I can reach out to as of you who has got all these items? I may have to. Use a little bit of help, <laughs> a little bit of knowledge in this. Yeah. That's so great about podcasts yeah. meeting others because we can learn from others. Yeah, you can. We can. Yeah. I learned how to get a shiner forehead, a shiny forehead like David. <laughs> <laughs> Is and this you know so this? this? We'll try to frown on her face. And now that she's off camera, her face is glowing. Uh, she's got a big smile on her face right now. She just didn't want to be in camera. She's shy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Tell her to die. Have, you, uh, have you, like, experienced, like, any kind of, like, uh, shadows or any kind of things being moved, anything <laughs> like that in your house with those objects or no? Justin, he, uh, it's just her usually just in here. He's got most of the stuff behind uh, glass. You you got face. Okay. Wow. But when she's when she's in a mood, he'll see her like there'll be a streak across the room or a quick like a quick glance. A quick like so, or she'll knock something over in the corner where she's sitting. She knocks something over the other. He has, her, he has her out in the open, like on a table next to the bed. She's and, the only my the only item of mine that's not in the display yeah. case. But she'll Okay. She knocks things over all the time for no no reason. Just if she thinks the energies are bad or if she wants more attention, she just she does that. My most prized possession that I do have out of the items I brought home from any location is um, what I found out in Walton Junction. It was an old leather boot heel that's predated to the 1900s. And, and it was from one of the lumberjacks that lived out there in Walton Junction. And... I happen to have that item, and I've got it on display in my case, and there's a description about Walton Junction itself in that display case. And that, that's, oh, that's cool. the coolest item that I have, and it is, it's is—it's—it's amazing. I can't believe I stumbled upon it. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a 1930 wheelchair. Whoa. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've got a 1930 wheelchair. i got a 1900 baptism gown. I got a 1900 uh, 
Looks like a made, uh, made, like a made apron type thing. Um, I got a rocking horse that I've captured figures on SLS with. I've got three mirrors. One, two of them are hand mirrors. The other one's like a big mirror. Um, I've got a clown doll. I've got three, four Amish dolls. I got two military hats. Wow. And I'm getting a headache. <laughs> that is so headache. I, I'm getting a headache. Up there into that mirror. <laughs> <laughs> no, sometimes when they're trying to like when see what happens is I'm sensitive to the paranormal when they're trying to like like let me know they're here or something's here. It will give me a headache. It will full blown give me a migraine. I have to like oh, I take bet. a second and just you know. Um, then again, I, I did show you my camera. Yeah, I, what? Then yeah. again, I showed my doll on camera. It's his energies from all that stuff. Can right. you imagine sitting in front of all. Oh, that definitely. Stuff? You're sitting oh, in front dude. of. The, it was, it was <laughs> a lot of energy in this room. I sit yeah. in this room every day and video edit. And sometimes I'll hear, I'll hear things. It's weird. Oh, yeah. um, what's I gonna no. say? I got a doctor's bag. I got a holy uh, water uh, container. Yeah. What the hell was that? I oh, oh, that's your kids. Okay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, what was that? That was Jimmy's granddaughter. Oh, you're fine. I was just making sure, like, it wasn't, you know, some kind of disembodied <laughs> kid voice or something. You know, that um, is cool. Do you use, what do you do as far as, you know, keeping your whole oh, house, I got Bibles. You know, Date back in the 1800s. Now, does all the, all the activity, is, is, is all the activity contained in that one room or is it spread out in your whole house? Um, they're all they're all contained down here, but they can move throughout the house. Yeah, they, no, they have. Is, then they have. This like a, yeah, this this is like a townhouse. So I have other. <laughs> so it can move throughout the old freaking. You see, with every item I have, when I when I first bring it in the room, I put it in display case. I say, listen, this is your spot. This is your spot where you live. This is your spot right here. You yeah. stay here. I will I will give you the attention you need and everything, but you need to respect my rules because you are in my house and respect my wishes as well as I would respect yours if it was your residence or it was your place of live. So this yeah. is your spot. This is your spot where you're at. So if as long as you respect me, I will respect you. Yeah, oh yeah. Um no, I let. I mean, I let them move freely because I want to see what kind of uh, what kind of activity they can do. Um, at my old residence where we lived, um, I had them in a garage, and I've actually experienced like what you call a spider web effect. Like, no, I was like walking through our kitchen that would go to our garage, and right in that doorway, I got hit, and it kicked me back. And I was like, Maggie, walk through there. She walked through and she didn't get it. I did. It was just, I was like, dang. Yeah. That's so it happened happen twice. So. Well, but these are. I was like, oh, God, what the hell? <laughs> right. But uh, David, tell yet, David yet has not come over to investigate my objects and he keeps saying he wants to come over here. Too busy, man. We'd be, <laughs> we'd be happy to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're more happy. I mean, you're more happy to sit down here and see what you can get. I don't care. I, 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 I think I'm so fascinated with the dolls behind you. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah. Nice. It sounds creepy, funny. but I like. I, I just, I'm just so fascinated with haunted items. Yeah, I, I've got plenty. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> David, what are you gonna say, bro? Um, can you guys tell me about? the most craziest encounters that you guys have ever encountered? Well, uh, Jamie, Jamie's out of the room right now, but I'll explain one of my, one of mine. Um, the most craziest encounter that I've ever had and was really eye opening. And I've, I, I mentioned this in the, and, and, and others that we we're part in other podcasts we we're a part of, um, since our Beaverton residential case, we had a client residential case in Beaverton. And um, 
it, uh, what, what was really strange in that whole uh, Clyde residential case was involving a, um, well, it was a parent murder-suicide. But well, mm-hmm. they call it suicide, but I think it was a, it was murder-suicide because I don't right. see how somebody can shoot themselves in the head twice and be able to shoot a second time. Right. Yeah, because that first shot, it, it's over. Exactly. Well, what was going on was there was a the, there was a bullet that was embedded in the wall, and there was still um, some energies coming off that bullet. Now I can't. I um, it's it was so long ago, and there's been so much that's been going on since then. I can't remember if the bullet was still lodged in the wall or if it was removed by the the current owner of the house. But of course, when it come to that, and the cop and the police department there in Beaverton ruled it just a suicide, and there was and and they had no idea because I mean, there were, there were, she was involved with a boyfriend at that time who was like really mean. He was really bad. He was really bad right. in jail and, and a lot of bad things. And they think that he was the one that did it. Right. Well, that night, you know, was a lot of psychological aspects behind that. And there is um, on our Facebook page as well as our YouTube channel. And it's also on TikTok, uh, an EVP that our um, team member at the time, Zach Smith and um, and um, Jacob Jacob uh, Jacob was on our team too. Then, and he, uh, I tell you what, they they Jacob got a hell no, and, and right on the oh, camera, yeah. hell no, wow. and there was none of us. It was just him that was walking down in the room, and everybody was in the other opposite direction. You could hear everybody talking in the background and all that stuff. And uh, he had asked J- he had asked Zach at the time. He's like, "Did you say hell no?" And Zach's like, "I'm like." No, I don't know what you're talking yes. about. Man. And he came to all of us asking us if we said it, but we were all off in a different room. Right. Now he was all by himself. That was pretty strange, but there was a lot of psychological feelings that night. And it, it, I mean, we're all happy and cheerful like we are now from me getting all really negative. And here's where the craziest part happens because all I know is I was standing in the, in the middle of the living room in front of the fireplace and I'm just, I'm acting like a Zach Bagans. Oh, we're talking about Beaverton. Yeah, I'm acting like a Zach Bagans. I'm I'm swearing like uh, I'm 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 provoking bad, and this oh. is, I'll never do that again. I will. I, I, that was the only time in any of our investigations I had ever provoked. But if you listen to the client when we first got there, the client actually I know which Casey's talking about just by hearing mm-hmm. that. When we got there, the client said that this is what had been happening at her house. She said she would date these really nice meek and mild guys they wouldn't hurt a fly they weren't violent they weren't this but after dating her for a while you could see the demeanor change the temper change the and she said that every single guy she's ever dated one of them even went to jail for two years for trying to kill her and there was no reason in this world for it no reason for it <laughs> and here I am provoking yeah. this thing right so, and- and, but she said he was acting exactly like the guys in her life have have acted like they come in they're nice it's happy it's refreshing they're having a fun I, time I, i'm never like that in yeah. any of our investigations but that was the only time in the six years of investigating in the field that that's ever happened to that me that's crazy. not like me and and then um I'm, I'm hearing zach the creepiest thing that's happened was when zach said in the most fearful voice i've ever heard anybody say in my life Dan, 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 you are staring down a shadow figure right now. He is staring down at you. You better back up, man. Or he didn't, I, I mean. Something like that. Something yeah. like that. But he, I know, all I remember the words, Dan, Dan, a shadow figure is staring you yeah. down right now. And he was shocked. And after that night was the last investigation he was even a part of. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah, he'd been he'd been on our team for a year and a half. But you know, there was there was other things that were going on. The reasons why he wasn't able to partake in our investigations and more and be happen. able to partake in the team. But I don't think that night helped. I don't think that night helped either. And that and I replay that footage over and over. And you know, I, like I said, you know, the motion changes. You know, it ended up with me bawling my eyes out. I was crying for some. Mm-hmm. I, you were affected by it. Yeah. For sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. 
And, really bad. And uh, so, Jamie, you, what? The question was, um, what's your what's your most creepiest experience? I know. Probably Walton Junction. Walton Junction is the only place that, that ever. You know, there's not a lot of things that scare me. People scare me more than more than the paranormal. There's not a whole lot of negativity. <laughs> People but, scare more than the paranormal. <laughs> For yeah. sure. But That's Walton awesome. Junction, so Walton Junction's great. It's a great place to go. We always have a great time out there. But then it comes to be a certain time of night when all of a sudden you can feel the energy change. You can feel the atmosphere change. And three times we've been out there and well we've been out there we've probably been out there a dozen times but three of the times we were out there it gets to the point where i feel surrounded and i don't feel comfortable anymore and it gives you like it it makes your heart like i can just feel it all of a sudden it just surrounds me like that and i'm just like if, if i ever tell daniel let's get out of here it's let's I'm get out of here. I'm very protective of Jamie. When Jamie so, says to get out of a location, yeah. I'm going to listen so to it. So happened, that happened to us the last time we were mm -hmm. out investigating. It just, we were having a good time. We were talking to, to these spirits. We were, a lot of stuff, a lot of good, fun stuff was happening. And then it got to be like probably around midnight. Yeah. But then it got real quiet first. And then the air, you could just feel the air get heavy. And Our I felt like. I felt like everything was just—I don't even know what it was, it was, really it was weird. surrounding us. The temperature changed. We were—I was using my temperature gun that I bought in the hardware store to measure the temperature outside, and, the, and it was reading sixty. What, what was the? There was sixty-one degrees. Was normal sixty temperature. something, but then it would go down to like around where we were standing. It was in the forties. Yeah, it was in the forties, and the normal temperature outside is was like 61. 61, 62, something like that. Yeah, and then, yeah. And it was really strange, and and then like I, like Jamie said. The spare box just went silent for a little bit, and it was like, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah, and it got real uncomfortable right. real quick. Real and, uncomfortable. And, and then when, when that happened, she said, let's go. And I'm like, okay, well, let's pack on out of here. I still was kept it, uh, kept on rolling, and I, I, I understand how people feel about orbs and everything. You can if, you're, if you've been researching for the amount of years that we've all been researching in the field, You'll know what orbs are and what bugs are, and there was a lot of orbs, and they were swirling in front of me at the end of the at the end of the broadcast. You can definitely tell. The I got my there. I got I got it on the handheld camera. I still have yet to review the footage because I mean we've all here been terribly busy, and I'm going to review right. that because I'm wanting to see that because at the end there was really strange because Jamie was telling me she was fighting with me to get in the car, and I'm like I got to keep rolling. I'm getting a lot of evidence here. She's like no, it's going to lure you. Get in the car. Let's get the hell out of here. Yeah. We did, and yeah. that, that's about the only, you know, because I grew up with this stuff, and I'm there's not much that makes me feel makes me feel very uncomfortable. Just that, and it's been several yeah. times out there that that we've experienced that. So I don't know what they, they they say because it was an old logging town at one point. There's several things that are going on out there. One, there's a cemetery overgrown that's not yeah. been taken care of that they've moved bodies out of. That the bodies weren't really in the in the spots they were supposed to be in the first place. Two, it was the train station where Mary McKnight, Michigan's first woman serial killer, got apprehended. 1903. And then um, three, they 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 have claims of witchcraft out there from the mm. locals that used to live in the town. And plus, you got jackasses that will go and get into that cemetery yeah. to do their stupid seances and you know f a lot of things up. And that's why we right. try to stop every year, just to simmer things down, in no, case right. that you know, happens to keep the place, you yeah. know, protected like it should be. Yeah. But it's so peaceful. There's Indian burials out that way. Yeah, it's a great place. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. I mean, I think the weirdest things that ever happened to me, well, a couple of weirdest things. First, I was uh, in Indiana investigating a historical museum, and towards the end. We were in the locksmith building and across from there is where they got the garage. Okay. The garage is where they stored the cars like that they have in the museum. And I'm taking full spectrum pictures with my camera. And Maggie's holding that select camera. And next thing you know, right out of the corner of my eye, do I see this tall, dark shadow just wow to left and gone. I mean, it had a 
Glitching, Dennis. Yeah, Dennis glitching. Wow, there could be a lot of energies in this room. Holy cow. Oh. 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 Are we there? Go. there? Yeah, you're there. You're glitching oh. really bad. Somehow. How many <laughs> I'm telling you, man, I, I being down here, I really think my um I really believe the are hey, hey, hey hi. <laughs> <laughs> what? I really think the haunted objects mess with my equipment down here. I am not going to lie. I really think they mess with my stuff down here. That, that's that's so cool. Yeah, that did not happen last Sunday, did it, David? <laughs> hey, Dennis, no. I got a quick question. Um, did you feel a uh, a temperature change in the room? What's that? Did you feel a temperature? Change in the room. No, not really. Why? Oh, uh, I was just wondering because whenever you came back on, there was like a, it was kind of like a little like a white glow to your face if you came back on. I was waiting for you to see oh, that. Okay. I know. Yeah. I, I wasn't for sure. I saw that too. Yeah. Did you? Oh. Huh? And then it's glitching a little bit. You. I mean, you're yeah. clear. We are right now. Then it started glitching really bad. Pretty yeah. Wicked man. Maybe something <laughs> like manipulating with your your equipment. That, that's what I'm saying. I think something's manipulating. I'm think something's messing with my laptop. But anyway, right. so <laughs> back to my story here. <laughs> I have over a hundred. You know what I'm saying? I have over a hundred haunted artifacts in my in this basement right here. This room alone. So that's awesome. So I wouldn't be surprised if they mess with my equipment. And David will tell you, they did not do this last Sunday. Dan, no, they did not, not do this last Sunday. So they're messing with me today. <laughs> but anyway, so we're so we're at the Indi again, Indiana Historical Museum, and we're investigating. And so I saw this tall figure has a hat, and it went from left to right. Yeah. Like the suckiest part is I did not get it on my 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 kit, my body camera, my regular camera, none of it. Didn't get on none of it. And I was so mad. But Maggie's like, Maggie's like, okay, I, you know, I'm like, Maggie, believe me, I've seen it. I would not make something up like that. Like, it went, I, it was crazy. It was just crazy. And uh, I, first time I've ever seen a shadow figure, I swear to God, first time. And I was just like mind blown by it. I was like, it just went. And then <laughs> last week we were investigating and we were at one, we were at the second location. And towards the end, the the husband that passed away, that owned that building, that owned that business, he was telling us constantly, leave, leave, get out, leave. leave. Yeah. Wow. No joke. He dropped the temperature down to 63.8 in that room. Wow. We it was were, yeah. <laughs> Before that, we were all just sluggish, like our energy was just drained like we just wow. wanted to, i wanted to lay down on the freaking booth and go to sleep and all, of a sudden, all of a sudden david and maggie are like dennis the temperature's dropping it dropped from what 67 yeah it was like 67.9 then it dropped down to like 63.8 I mean, like, dropping dropping yeah and we even asked we we're like are you dropping the temperature and he was like yeah oh wow it was he was trying to make us leave. He was yeah. trying to force us out. Wow. He didn't want us in there at all. And no. I was downstairs in the basement and I kept getting leave, get out, and then it said my name twice. And it it's kind of crazy because I was downstairs in the basement. Maggie and Dennis were upstairs in the back and I heard my name downstairs. And what I didn't know was Dennis and Maggie heard my name come through through the through the spirit box at the same exact time that that, that I heard it down in, in the basement. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was crazy. It was crazy. That was just never had a room temperature drop that cold. I mean, it was it was cold. We were like, it's time to go. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that that uh. That if we would have like blew our breath, I think that we would have all three seen our breath. Like that's how cold. Yeah. It was. Oh wow. Yeah. And we told when we told him we were leaving, he actually came through and said thank you. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> cool. that, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, he goes, thank you. Respect back and said, thank you for leaving. And you guys gave him that respect back because I was going to ask you, did you guys leave the room or did you guys stay? No, we left. We were like, we're we're, we're going to go now. And he he was like, thank you. Right. Usually usually nine times out of ten, if you you listen to them, they tell you get get away. You get away. You'll get a response back. And, you know, rather than stand there and – because, I mean, that's what I say, you know. They want to respect just as well as what we would, you know. Yeah. I mean, they had a hard, pretty. They had a pretty. Crazy. Mm-hmm. crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. But yeah. See what else? Man, what else happened? Um, I was downstairs in the basement, and I got two names, Nick and a Mark. And Mark is the. Ex husband, about the ex husband, yeah, but yeah. the husband that passed away. And I kept feeling a presence all around. Me, oh like, wow! Everywhere. Then Dennis came downstairs with the SLS camera, and two anomalies showed up on the SLS camera. Like that's what I was sensing that was around. Me. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was, it was crazy, Dan. It was, it was crazy, and and no joke though. I, was it a mop stick or something got tipped, got knocked over? It was a, a broomstick. Um, yeah, it got knocked over. You can watch my entire footage, and you'll see this broomstick up against the wall. And the I happened time. to ask a question. I said, um, hey, Nick, I'm like, what happened to you down here? And he said that he got shot twice. Now, the the uh, owner, I asked her, I'm like, do you know anyone named Nick? And she said that she had a clue. And I was thinking to myself, maybe it was the previous owner who owned it before Mark and his wife just it. And maybe he got shot down there. And I said, um, where did you die down here? And there was like a little doorway. And it said right in front of you. And oh, wow. I went, um, I went walking forward, and like I heard Dennis coming down the step. And next thing you know, I hear this loud bang, and I turn my camera, and I'm like, "Was this just like this, or did this just happen?" And then I went back in my in my footage, and I noticed that that broom handle was up. And then after I heard that bang, it was down. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then David went upstairs and me and Maggie was investigating and Maggie asked, how did you die? And he said, heart. And you die of a heart attack. And de- and then Maggie asked, when did you die? And it said 10. He died January 10th of 2019 or 2020. Oh, one of those. 2020. January yeah, 10th 2020. of 2020. Yep. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, That's awesome. Yep. Yep. It's... It was really cool. It'll, it'll be in our YouTube series, in our oh, second yeah. series. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but uh, yeah, it was a really cool place. Um, the place before that was really cool too. Um, caught some really good evidence. We went down in the basement. I ended up getting like a vertigo feeling. Like I felt like the room was tilting. I don't know why. Just felt like it was tilting. I had to take a minute. Um. Something down there. I uh, consulted with the medium, like FaceTimed. You know, that person told me that there's something down there that likes to watch people. So I don't know what all that was about, but it was crazy. So that would have been crazy. That's yeah. wicked. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I'm looking to actually reached out to some more locations and, and, and hoping to hear back so I can start negotiating. Um, we got one location in September and then <laughs> I'm doing a speaker series in near Mansfield, Ohio in October. So, awesome. and then we're going to be at the mid Michigan Paracon. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. So we'll be there. Yep. Awesome. And then we're going to, and then we're going to be at the Dead Convention in Fort Wayne. Have you ever uh, coming up to MI Paracon? 
Which one? So, uh, uh, am, I? C- uh, am I Paracon? Sault Ste. Marie? No, I haven't been up there. I want to go, but I haven't been up there. It's massive. Oh, it's massive. And if you ever have an opportunity to get up there in the Sault Ste. Marie, oh, it's amazing. And up in Upper Peninsula, very yeah. beautiful. So many abandoned towns up there. And yeah. there's these places where there's telegram poles still standing where it's mm-hmm. like people left the town and left everything in the in the buildings. And people don't bother with them. And people, I mean, everybody... I mean, you can go in these places and check these places yeah. out. These, it, it's pretty cool up there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, dude, I think the highest I've been in Michigan, honestly, is Claire. And that's when I investigated the Doherty Hotel and the uh, Cops and Donuts for dude, my documentary. You guys got to get up here in Traverse City and we can take you a walk around the Northern Michigan Asylum up here, State Hospital in Traverse City. And if you have a, and if I could recommend you guys get a historical tour, but right that now, place is freaking amazing. With the right guy. Yeah. Get a historical tour with the right guy. Because, I mean, they're, they're really, they're, they, they're really uh, I, I hate saying it this way, balls deep into paranormal investigations there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, because due to the amount of vandalism and disrespect on the property and its history, I mean, it's those assholes that go on there and vandalize it for and ruin it for Everyone, people. Yeah. Shit. And, you know, we've even told them, you know, there's a lot of money you could make off of these investigations if you just, you know, consider allowing them. And yeah. having, they, they won't even do it. <laughs> yeah. Some people don't want investigations and mm-hmm. some people just don't want the publicity, you know. That's, that's what, what it is. That's what they don't want. But yeah. but but the owner claims that it's 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 not haunted. But yet you know it's on. Um, he says he doesn't believe. It's, he doesn't believe it's, it's haunted. haunted. He doesn't believe in that kind of stuff at all. So oh. his thing was, make me a believer. Make well, me a believer. We told him you know we you can't we can't make you a believer unless you come along with us. Come on along with us. We've invited him several times to come with us. Right. And even the tour guide. So we had a really cool tour guide. And he came, yeah. you know, he let us do some investigating. And he's like, you should see some of the stuff that I've seen down here over the years. And he's like, I really do. I do wish that they would let, you know, paranormal investigators come in here that have good intentions. Like yeah. people mm-hmm. that are doing it to get for actual research and for actual history and stuff like that. Not just, you know, those, I hate to use the term urban explorers, but we ran into several groups of them there where there were just a bunch of, you know, kids in their 20s, and all they wanted to do was get inside and see how scary it was. And It's, it's yeah. like not the way you do things, but, you know, at pretty much every every live broadcast we have, there's uh, of them that will come up. I think that's why Ouija board's got a bad name, because <laughs> of urban explorers. <laughs> you know, I keep telling people. They begin, you know, you get these college kids, high school kids, man, you know, they get drunk. They're like, you know, let's get a Ouija board. Let's see what we can conjure up. They're sitting around drunk as hell, putting their finger on the freaking thing. Then they're asking questions, open up the door, something moves, something slams. And then what happens? They get up and run. And then what happens? The door's open. They don't close it. So now the door door becomes haunted. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they're calling us. Then they're calling us to come in and remove the object. You know, it's like common sense, people. <laughs> common sense. Well, we, we had numerous amount of client residential cases where it's involved that. Or, yeah. or people were part of a thing at the state hospital or something like that, and that's yeah. what happens. One of our yeah. worst one of our worst client cases was a a sixteen year old boy and yeah. his mother took him to she so she didn't know what was wrong with him he was acting really weird really out of character and she thought oh my god my kid's on drugs <laughs> so he got in some trouble in school and they recommended community service to him and this and that and she's like well i think he's on drugs so she took him to a rehab for teenagers oh, wow. they, had, they tested him he didn't test positive they uh-huh. evaluated him he was no you know no drug problems whatsoever but he kept telling this story over and over and he would tell it clear as a bell and you have to remember he's 16 mm-hmm. he would tell a story about going to detroit with his runners and he would tell her about all kinds of drugs that they picked up and 
the stuff that they were slinging and he had all these stories of hustling pool and doing this and doing that and she's like well, how are you getting to detroit when is this happening that i don't know about it you know mm-hmm. she's like this, this isn't real because you're you, you can't possibly be going to do all these things you're only 16 years old how she's like how are, have you been hustling drugs for 10 years like you're telling me and yeah. his, his stories were elaborate and then she's like so he graduated from rehab they said there's nothing wrong with him to keep him there uh-huh. right. we finally we had a mutual friend and her the friend gave her my number and told her to reach out to me we had extensive phone calls before we even went there and uh she would tell me about his behavior change and she said every time his behavior changes he'd put his hoodie over his head put his head down and then he would just like freeze up he wouldn't talk to people he wouldn't he wouldn't look you in the eye he would just be real mean real so i asked her if we could come first investigate the house because to begin with they live in a really bad area where lots of suicides and stuff had taken place so oh, wow. we came and investigated the property. How far away were they, were they like a mile or a half mile away from the state hospital? No, they were a ways away from the state oh. hospital, but they had all those suicides on their property. Oh, yeah. Even the the boy's dad had died. I thought it was like a, a no. couple miles down the road. But anyway. um, That's cool. Daniel for president. <laughs> <laughs> but Vote for me. So, <laughs> upon investigating we found out that this boy had been playing in the state hospital tunnels with a Ouija board that he had oh, no idea where this Ouija board was anymore and he, he got had, partly possessed he he had an attachment he surely yeah. had an yeah. attachment for sure it's the first time and I've ever seen anything like it that took us, it took yeah. us several, several times going out to their house um, to, to even get him to get him back to a normal phase again. And, and it eventually worked. I mean, but it was a long process, especially mm-hmm. for me, because I'm the one that, that finally that finally got him out of it. But right. play I pulled, some freaky stuff after this. Sorry, go ahead. I, I, pulled it, I pulled it out of him. Me and his mother sat and we we pulled this negative energy out of him. And while we're doing that, we have other, you know, everybody else is doing their part to try to try to help us get this away. And by the end of the night, he his hoodie was no longer on. You know, and this isn't the first night. This is like the fourth or fifth time we'd been out there. By uh-huh. the end, of, by the end of that night, his hoodie came off. He was looking his mom in the eye. He gave her a hug, and you know, <laughs> she's <dead. laughs> Thank you, Dave. Awesome. And I, uh, I told her to reach out to us if anything bad happened again. And I, we did follow ups and stuff. Where that that kid was bad. He, they did the same thing. Well, let's go play with the Ouija board. It's fun, you know. And it's mm-hmm. just a child's toy. And and you know, you you don't know what's going to happen. He was probably right. drinking and. <laughs> right. <laughs> thanks, 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 Dave. Dave. Awesome. <laughs> Dave's a good, oh. respected guy that that follows us, and he watches a lot of our live broadcasts. Him too. He, he follows. He, he's following. You. That's awesome. He's a good guy. That's cool. Good. He's hey, awesome. That's great, man. That's great. Um. So this is actually going to be on one of the episodes on our first series. And I still haven't like video edited it, but we went to a house that is a friend of David's, and. And uh, it had a it had a negative attachment there. Okay, so I'm like, okay, because I use what you call I used what you call the Phasma box, which is mm-hmm. a software on the laptop, and it's like a clear white noise, like the GeoPort type thing. Right. Yeah. And um, so I asked, I said, did I ask David? Did I say, is it evil? And it said yes. Yeah, I said okay. Well, we're gonna play this game. I said I pulled out my holy water. I said if you're evil, this is really gonna piss you off. And he came across and said, "Relax, stop." Yeah. Oh my god. Oh wow. Yeah, I went around the whole house just throwing holy water in every corner of the house. As David. Oh yeah. Wow. And then after to, he did that, I burned it. stage everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> just to provoke it because we wanted to see a reaction. 
you said you're evil, then show us. Right, right. You know, it's the same way with the negative. Damn. I'm getting like goosebumps. <laughs> it's like, seriously, weird. But um, your, your, your uh, video has been pixelated yeah. a little bit. Is it? Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm getting goosebumps. There, there might be some right here next to me. Well, um, first, when the show first started, you're like really, really clear, and then it started gradually getting no, pixelated. No, it's, it's not next to you. Hang on just a second, though. It's right there along the left side of your face in front of you. Yep, the right side of I can see it. Can you see it? Yep, I can. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was talking about whenever um, his camera froze and, and uh, then he came back on. Yeah. Then it gets pixelated. Oh, there you go. Yep, it's messing with, oh, yeah. messing with my equipment. <laughs> you got, oh, man. You just want somebody that wants to wants to join in, probably. You know? Yeah, probably do. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. So, so anyway, with the high turn, the negative attachment. So, um, and I have this video on my on the team page if you ever want to check it out. So I'm reading the Lord, like the Lord's prayer for my rosary, and I pause for a second, and then next thing you know, you hear this like dark demonic voice go, stop, and then it growled. It was like Rrr. I was like, Whoa. and then during a live investigation. Uh, I was reading the the prayer, you know, the St. Michael prayer, and it no, no, I no, I take that back. What I was saying was, I asked, I said, "Do you want me to throw holy water on that high chair?" And right. next thing you know, you hear the loudest hiss that echoed this whole room. Oh my God! Then the second time investigating. I was reading the uh, St. Michael's prayer and it came across the ghost tube and it said behind you and you could literally see a face manifesting in a demonic way on my bookshelf right behind me. So what do you think it was? It was the negative attachment. Right, but it, so it was from you or it was from the place? No, it was from the high chair. Uh, the high chair has a demonic attachment. I gotcha. Oh, wow. Yeah, it has a demonic attachment. It possessed a one and a three-year-old. They killed them. Right. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. Yeah. Scary. That's why I have That's why I have a cross on the uh, table of it. Because yeah, yeah. it's worth by an exorcist. So it <laughs> contains it. It keeps it at bay. But the other time it was trying to get all rowdy, and I actually checked it when we were investigating on live, and it actually said, leave me alone. Because... Oh, because I was taught, I'm friends with a couple of mediums and also the investigator who I get my objects from. And he told me with demonic entities, you got to show your power over them. You got to check them. And that's what I did. I checked that bastard. And it, it, hasn't, it hasn't done crap since. It hasn't got loud. It hasn't done nothing. Because I said, I'm the one in control. I'm the one who tells you what to do you don't control me you don't tell me what to do yeah right. and it's just, right. it was like leave me alone you can hear it it goes leave me alone it said it leave me alone i, I don't know but yeah so <laughs> but um guys down for a minute i have to change it uh, I, oh you're fine you, you gotta change your diaper <laughs> 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 he's gotta change his diaper sorry guys <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so, but that, yeah, that, that's probably the only negative thing I have in this, in this yeah. collection. But then I just ordered a small bag of Ed Ginn's, uh dirt from his farmland. So we'll see what that has. Um, yeah. That'd be and I've, actually had, I've had three mediums say that Ed Ginn and his mother is attached to it. So we'll see. There you go. Hmm. We'll see. It's scary too. <laughs> we just got the it's, it's, it's Yeah. The curiosity of the paranormal <laughs> investigator in me that wants to investigate to find out that dirt really <laughs> has the energy from all that tragedy, and because uh -huh. um, again, and his mother's known to haunt that property, all of that property. Oh wow. Yeah. It's pretty cool. 
Yeah. So I got two haunted objects coming tomorrow, plus against uh, farmland dirt coming. So well, let's see how cool. it goes. There, there yeah. you go. To add it to my uh, collection. So. All right. Oh, oh man, that was a fast diaper change. Holy cow, you one man pit crew, dude. <laughs> a one man pit crew, man. He was just like. I had the sign, I blew it up 10. I said, one man pit crew. Yeah, I'm the baby, changing him, doing laundry. Oh, there you oh. go. Fatherhood, man. You got to love it. Heck yeah. Uh, man, doing a podcast. My turn 12. My turn 12. I got a doll up here with me now. Oh, she's pretty. Yep. She's known to pinch people. Really? Yep. Yep. That's oh, yeah. Lucy. Is that what it's a lot? Okay. Oh. Yep. Yeah, you know, she's known to pinch people. She don't like to be like. She don't like to be recognized. She don't want the attention. She just wants to be a loner and just left alone. Just leave her alone, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my lord. Uh, I do want to say hi to my wife because she said hi to everyone earlier. Oh, hi, wife. Well, if she's still watching. <laughs> I don't know. If she well, there's five people watching, so your wife might be one of the five. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> not sure. Not sure. Oh dang, I'm getting a headache again. Hmm. You know, that's kind of funny because I, I was upstairs and I was getting like a little slight headache myself. It's gone now. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, like. Like the energy isn't wasn't as active last week with Sarah, who's a medium, right? But but I'm live with you, and these things are like glitching my laptop, <laughs> glitching my <laughs> my laptop, it. giving me headaches, giving me goosebumps. It's like Jesus. <laughs> like, what do you do, Dan? You bringing the energy out in on what you doing, man? I don't know. I don't know, but. Uh... Calm hey, that hey, crap hey. down. <laughs> <laughs> Calm it down. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> That's that why he wants Daniel for president because he brings everything spirit wise. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great to have me on the show then because you're going to get a lot more information from your items. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was just like, dang. Yeah, it's crazy. But then again, I don't know. Like I said, I put my doll on camera, and everything behind you can see what's on your end because it's going to be displayed on your screen. So that's yeah. why I explained in the in the broadcast a short bit ago about me showing my doll on the screen like that. Maybe it spiked a little bit with what's going on there because they they noticed mine and they saw my yeah. doll on your screen. Yeah, that could be. And you guys want to know the uh, funny be. thing? Sure. It's actually raining right now, too. Well, it's like sprinkling, but it did rain a lot whenever we first started. Yeah, it did here, too. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Is your – is your – okay, quick question, D. Not you. You. Sensing Hospital. We got three Ds on – we got three Ds here. So, I've got three. <laughs> so Dan. So yes. when it storms, does your uh, objects get active? I don't know. I don't know I, if that's a pattern or not. Right. I I do have a philosophy on that. I do too, but I, don't I do know have that. a philosophy on that. I want to say you know there's certain times where you can go to certain locations because I mean, I I say you're gonna get different activity. In the same places you go to, because I mean, every location that we've went to numerous amount of occasions, there was some sort of a different yeah. type of paranormal or unexplainable. I don't want to say paranormal. I want to say unexplainable phenomena that's going on. 
at, dirt, at locations at different times because of the elemental factors that the earth may produce, whether it be different types of weather patterns. So I will watch the weather. And I'll look at the different types of weather. We're, when we get a lot of spiked activity, when we go out to different locations in our area here, after after a good rain and it starts, you know, clearing up a little bit and the sun starts popping and there's a nice sunset, I'll tell you what, you know, I think with the water, with the wetness in the atmosphere, I because I, I, we all produce a natural EMF, electromagnetic yeah. energy to us yeah. um i want to say it may have something to do with that factor and we may you know experience different things like you know maybe as i say feelings in the atmosphere i mean i've noticed whenever we've had a paranormal activity when the air's been a little bit damp and everything out it's whoo it doesn't it's intense and you know you got lakes you got rivers you got streams and a lot of them are spring fed a year in northern Michigan, a lot of our a lot of our um, areas up here, it's like spring-fed uh, cricks and stuff like that. So, I mean, I want to say that could actually produce a little bit more EMFs in the atmosphere, and they'll produce oh, yeah. stuff. So, yeah, I, I think you know a lot of the times, you know, it, it, that could play a good factor in a lot of things. Well, you know, I'm just wondering, you know, That's because right. of that. Because of that whole theory, you know, if it storms, it kind of produces energy and, you know, I mean, I've, yeah, I mean, I've never like really had a, like a whole bunch of, you know, activity out of my objects during a storm, you know, but again, I, you know, I can tell you some of these objects are residual. Some of them are intelligent. Oh, definitely. You know, definitely. Yes. You know, um, I, and I, you know, I, I can't tell you which ones are which. <laughs> I sure in hell can because I have over 100 of them. So, you know, it'd be like a guessing game. <laughs> but as I say again, you know, it's it, we all have our theories in the field. And it's, yeah. it's, um, it's respect on other people's beliefs and everything. And, you know, like us, you know, I mean, you, Dennis, you would have your own. Your your own um, theories behind things. So do you, David, and and anybody else that's tuning into this broadcast will have their own opinions on things. And you know, and, and everybody's opinion is very well respected. And a lot of times, you know, it's listening to what your theory would be, Dennis, or your theory would be, David, or anybody else tuning in. You know, that I may be able to learn from because it may be a theory that I've never really known about. I'm like. Oh well, that that sounds pretty interesting. That 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 matches. And I, I mean, you know, it may sound better than what anybody else sees us. So that's why we learn from each other in the field. And if everybody were to, you know, just respect that aspect, you know, we might be able to get further into what we want to believe in. And that's is there ghosts out there? I mean, because it's still not one hundred percent. So yeah. lots of, we we all have seen our fair share of unexplainable things. Everybody has. Yeah, you know, yeah. but you know, it's respect, and it's pretty sad to say that a lot of people's got to be afraid of posting that type of stuff on the internet because they get bashed and or get slandered yeah. in some sort of way. Yeah. yeah, well, we sh it shouldn't, and you're right; it shouldn't be that way. We should all just be able to post our post everything out there and and learn from. I mean, I mean, explain, of... explain. Yeah, there's certain ways of explaining, you know, that you know it may not be that way, but in a in a non disrespectful way, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but but you see, that's where it's going to be everywhere. I mean, you may if people have their haters, but you know, I say, do your own damn thing. You know, go live right. on Facebook, have fun. You know, it doesn't matter what anybody thinks. Nobody can take a hobby away from you. This is not a job. This is yeah. a hobby. I, I mean, we consider it a job because we love what we do. We have a lot of dedication, and we have that ambition to learn more and more every day. Every day I'm learning something new, and I've said that in numerous amount of podcasts that we've been a part of. It's well, amazing to right. learn. Well, it's like I told everyone, even when I was being guests on um, podcast shows, you know, right. they'd be like, you know, what is the one thing, you know, you would tell someone who would join the field? I said, be prepared because the paranormal world, the community, it's a gang warfare. It is. Mm -hmm. It's a gang warfare. Wow. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's like it's like gangs, but you know, <laughs> everybody's territorial. 
You know what I'm saying? Well, and gangs are territorial. Not, we're not shooting nobody, and we're not doing none of that. I'm just, you know, because it is. It's a gang warfare, and people end up going up against each other because you're stepping on that person's toes or you're stepping on that person's, right. you know, thing. So or, or they or, get jealous or. because you're climbing to the top, and they're still at the bottom. <laughs> you know, it, I'm just saying. It, it's the truth, though. It's the truth. Yeah. If, right. If every, if you know, if everyone just you know, park their pride and just you know, congratulate those who, you know, have good ideas and exactly, you know, you know I think it would get better. It's just everyone wants to climb to the top. Everyone wants to be. Everyone wants that number one spot. That's it. That's all People, there is to it. And, and their egos. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's not about number one. It's not about being number one. Yeah. We're all here for together. You know. We're all here for each other. We all are here to help. You know, spirits may reach out to us for help, you know. And yeah. you know, that's where it's like a win-win scenario on our end, you know. Not only would we be able to help our clients, but not only are we going to be helping certain spirits that may be seeking us for help. We're the only people that they can talk to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, it's just... You know, client, I'm just saying, everybody, mm -hmm. everybody wants to, you know, climb that ladder. And we, get, we get clients calling us because because they're afraid of sounding crazy. And that's the reason why they won't reach out to teams like us because they don't want to sound crazy. We tell you everybody, you know, if we, I mean, we got a lot of people that tune into a lot of our things locally. If we have any of locals are tuning into this right now, please, please don't be afraid to reach out to anybody as of us. Yeah. Well, you're not crazy. It's out there. I mean, we yeah, talked to us. Yeah, to listen. I've, yeah, I've actually had people, uh, um, was it with haunted objects? They'd be like, man, I got this, this, this activity in my house. And, and I'm talking to them, and they're like, man, you make me feel better. Like, I'm not crazy like some other people. And I'm just like, I'm just yeah. like, no, right. you're not crazy. I own over 100 haunted objects. I've investigated numerous locations. I've experienced things I cannot explain. So, mm -hmm. no, you're not crazy. I get it. I and get it. To, right. And then just to make them feel better, like we've had several clients just not even understand it. So if you just – I come in with the scientific thing. I come in and tell them about energy and how it can't be – destroyed or broken and then tell him, you know, well, pretend you're, you know, your grandpa lived here for 35 years. Do you think that his energy is just going to go away when he dies? No, it can't be destroyed. Energy can't be destroyed. So where is it going to go? You know, so once exactly. you start breaking it, breaking it down into them and, and make them embrace instead of be feared of it, because a lot of people, that's why they don't talk about it is because they're afraid. They're afraid of what they don't know. And that's common for yeah. humans. We're always yeah. afraid. If we don't know something, we're afraid of it. So yeah. if the more that they know, the less they're afraid of it, the more they embrace it, the better the the mood gets, the energy gets. Their, exactly. Their house gets quieter, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. You know, in, like, I, like I explained to people, you know, spirits are going to attach themselves to something if they don't want to go. They're going to attach I'm themselves sure. to something. A house, a doll, right. a book. A freaking knife, whatever they're going to attach themselves to something that's very valuable a gun, you know, something we all know. whatever is viable to us, um, even places that where we be, where we've been to, our energies are going to be attached to that location or that item that is really prized of, uh, of, uh, of our own or anything as of that. And, love doing. and I believe that's where we're going to be. That's where I mean. I mean, our spiritual form is where most of our EMF, our natural EMF that our own selves and our own bodies produce is going to be. I mean, it'd rather be a grocery store that you go into every day. You know, yeah. I mean, the uh, a local grocery store, if you're walking in there more so more times in a week than anything, you got to understand how many years you've been walking in that one grocery store. Your yeah. energy is going to be so at some point. And there's old people out there right now that that's their best place to go hang out. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, you know, bars, hotels, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, hotels, you know, they, they keep that stuff under wraps. They don't want us to know that there have been suicides or ODs because I guarantee you, 
there's a lot of paranormal activity. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? This is the philosophy for streams and rivers coming to play because I feel like that rivers and streams, I mean, Nick Groff said that quite well in Ghosts of Shepherdstown when he was explaining about the river that was falling in the middle um, in the Potomac River. Hey, Richard, what's going on? That river is flowing through the middle of the of these towns, of the three towns there, Shepherdstown included, and I think it's a it's a natural natural uh, Hi. highway for oh, spiritual oh. activity, and it would emit that Hi, that Rich. natural EMF <laughs> into the atmosphere, and it would make that whole town haunted because the Potomac River flows right in the middle of it. Well, and it creates yeah, oh, yeah. it's enough I'm electricity. Sure. Creates enough electricity to yeah. give you know energize them. Exactly, and yeah, I, I I think that that's that's the reasons why we can communicate. Like for instance, I mean, yeah. look at all the different amounts of locations you can commute with Abraham Lincoln at. People have claimed, for sure. you know, he was he he was born and raised in Indiana, and he also lived in Springfield, Illinois, and he's right. also communicated with that Gettysburg while you. you that, that big Gettysburg address. I've heard certain people claim that they've had responses from him there. How can you get from point A to point B? Well, you got rivers that flow everywhere throughout the United States, and they connect with each other in some way, somehow. They got yeah. water. Water is a big conductor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you got also I, got. I mean, you also got we, the ley lines we, too. We, me, and uh, we went to Gettysburg. Was the last oh, year. Yeah. Yeah, last year. Yeah. And uh man, the Jenny Wade house. That was crazy. We didn't get really much out of the orphanage. Um <laughs> David did get touched on his hand, but nothing really yeah. big. Not as much as the Jenny Wade house. But and, see, and like it was kind of weird because at the orphanage, the the um the uh, tour guide guy he said that nothing ever really happened up on the first floor. Then as soon as he said that, I got touched. And then wow. Dennis, oh, wow. Um, uh, Dennis uh, he wound up taking a uh, photograph. And in the photo, you can see an orb that was right by my left arm. Yeah. Yep. Oh, wow. And then, well, and, the genu and then what's crazy is I wore I wore a Confederate hat the whole time. <laughs> Just to see what, I, what would happen. <laughs> you know? It's, 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 that's a trigger object. You know, you got a Confederate to them. That is a conf yeah, Which, I mean, you walk into Gettysburg, you, you're wearing a Confederate hat. You're walking into the Jenny Wade house, which Jenny Wade got shot by a Confederate soldier. Right, right. right. You know, and then you're going into the orphanage. You know, I'm wearing the Confederate hat in the orphanage, but I don't think it really mattered because, you know, that was whatever. But, you know, and we did capture a gunshot over the spirit box. And it was yeah. crazy. Wow. Kind of like a yeah. musket. Yeah. It was like, boom. I was like, it took me a second. I was like, wait, is that a gunshot? And Dave was like, yeah, that was a gunshot. We we're just like, <laughs> yeah. So, like, we were down in the uh, on YouTube. That the first part yeah. I'm working on the second part, but the first part's on our YouTube right now. So, so a question I have for you, Dennis: What type of spirit box do you use? I use multiple. I use a regular SB7. I'll use uh, the uh, Phasma box. I'll use Necrophonic, and I'll use the Ghost Tube. They're the only two, the only three technology apps that I will use that have proven to be successful. We know and few. straight answer. Uh, Dave, Dave, Dave Miller, Miller the guy that was just on here, ITC Legion. ITC Legion. I recommend <laughs> I recommend Dead Time and Anomalies from Dave Miller. Amazing. Okay. And I recommend Nick Riggs' um, Ouija List, too. Yeah, that's really awesome. Ouija List is awesome. We've used it at several different locations here, but as I say with these apps, go to your more remote locations to use them. I know how. Of course, everybody knows right. how to use them. <laughs> and, and yes, of course, know how to use the damn things because a lot of yeah, people yeah. Use them properly. <laughs> yeah, and so echo boxes with, with the ghost one. tube. With the ghost tube, that has proven to be really good. And again, like I said, I when the one. second time I was investigating my haunted objects live, like I 
I said, I caught the, the thing that came up and said behind you. And then if you look behind me into the bookshelf, you see that face. Right. And then it came across and says, I see you. So it basically was acknowledging that it was watching me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you how accurate you are with, with what you said about wearing the Confederate hat. Because when we were at Coyote Bill's Ranch in Bel Air, here in, uh, check this out. Anybody who is, can get up here in Bel Air, Michigan, go to Coyote Bill's Ranch. Pretty cool place. Uh, a man that started in 600 plus um, Western films back from the 70s through the 80s. Johnny Thunder used to own the place. Um, there is also um, a, a jewelry box that was handed over to Edgar Allan Poe's girlfriend. Um, that's okay. the, that item is amazing. Um, uh, he's. I actually got to wear a hat that Clint Eastwood wore in The Good and Bad right. and the Ugly. Right. So Johnny, oh, wow. Johnny, Johnny mm -hmm. Thunder was a stunt man. And I wore that. I wore that hat all that night. And I tell you what, the paranormal activity in that yeah. place was just peaking. And I would say it was a good trigger object. Yeah. I'm sorry. You're it's okay. No, I was just clarifying it so they're not confused. <laughs> oh. So Coyote, no, Coyote Bill owns the ranch. And he was really great friends with, with Johnny Thunder. When Johnny Thunder died, they had been really good friends for a really long time. And Johnny Thunder didn't have family. You know, he didn't have kids and stuff okay. to pass the to. So Coyote Bill was like, is, is okay, you know, I'll, I'll take your stuff for you. But he's, got, John yeah, Wayne. he's got pictures of him with He owns single. John Wayne's yeah. pistol. He does. Oh wow! So, really? It's got, the, it's got the number zero zero two printed right on the barrel. Yep. He's got a pair yeah. of boots that he wore in one of those. Oh man! Yeah. yeah. A lot so of a lot of cool so many things. trigger objects out two, there. That... Two movie props from the show. I would say Spartacus back in. But it wasn't. It was a it movie like Spar Spartacus. It was. It was like yeah. a movie like Spartacus. But he's got the Poseidon staff, and the gladiator sword and the shield from that movie. Oh and wow. The, and like I said, the more, numerous amount of photographs of, of um, Johnny Cash, John Wayne, um, oh man, uh, and several others. I mean, you name it. He, they, he, pretty cool place. Oh, the, I got the, the uh, location yeah. in uh, uh, Columbus. There was a lot of uh, John F. Kennedy photos, Ronald Reagan photos. I mean, oh. there was just so many photos. Um, there was. Um, what was the boxers? Dempsey or De Dempsey? Yeah, yeah. There's yeah, a Dempsey yeah. boxer, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Jack Dempsey's yeah. photo was there with the autograph. There's a lot of photos. Well, Jamie just found the internet. Jamie just found it on the internet about Johnny Thunder. Yeah, he grew up in Bel Air too. So that's and cool. if you go, if anybody goes on a Cherry Capital Shadow Seekers later, she'll put a link up to it. And you guys can read it. It was yeah. off of a local news station up here. They they had a big thing about it. Cool, cool. I like that. Pretty cool place. It's a really cool place. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 crazy. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. But I'll have to check that place out. Maybe I'll have to travel up there and see if I can it's, investigate it. It's really cool. We. So the last time we were there, we did this experiment with the jewelry box, and yeah. we put we put a recorder inside the jewelry box when we weren't in the room. But I mean, you can still hear us off in the distance, but it's a it, it's faint enough yeah. off in the distance where you can tell, okay, that's people talking back there. But we went over the recording in the jewelry box, and there's some stuff going on yeah. in that recording that we just we can't explain yet. No, we're still reviewing it yeah. and all that, but. I got a I got a jewelry box that's haunted. Right yeah. on my shelf over here. Yeah. <laughs> it actually it's supposedly it's known to the claims are it's supposed to play music on its own. But I have not heard it yet. So not holding you to that. Sorry. Turn my phone down, sorry. <laughs> but um but yeah, so uh, but yeah, I got a haunted. Yes, yeah, seriously, I got a haunted uh jewelry box. No joke. Very that's, cool. That's awesome. I got like two Raggedy Ann dolls. Dude, oh, those are not in a house. What you know? Oh shit! She escaped from the case. We're gonna have to contact Tony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. 
I got a pair of glasses. I have some like construction glasses. Crazy. The amount of stuff I have here. Seriously. Yeah, don't get Seriously. any idea. I, I, everyone who walks in here can feel the energy right when they hit the door. She won't allow me to have any of that. She killed me. He's got his he's got his little collection that is kept behind glass, but I won't I won't allow See? a big collection. <laughs> Here's the thing though. Here's the thing. Yeah, My here. wife so we we have the, our YouTube series too that's called Haunted Artifacts, where we investigate our artifacts of our collection. So box. <laughs> <laughs> so Maggie Maggie's more like she likes to go to locations and investigate, but she's more into the haunted artifacts. Like she's into the objects because she likes the history behind it, the spirit that's attached to it. She likes to investigate them to get more info and, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, one of our big goals, me and Maggie's big goal is, is to open a haunted museum here in Toledo. And take that all these it. and put them in our haunted museum and then let people come and experience them. That's cool. You know, you see, that's, I, our I, goal. that's our I, big we, goal. We when we have people over and we and and I and and they, they're not really familiar with anything like that, I'll I'll allow them to come in our, come into the bedroom and I show them my case and everything. That's why I keep it. Is one of those people new in our house, you know. I can show them off this case here, this beautiful case. I mean, I've even got a brick from um, Middle Point School, and the schoolhouse is is in Middle Point, Ohio. Thank you, Austin Maynard. Um, we work with the <laughs> Paranormal Network down there with Austin Maynard, and he's got a lot of incredible locations for everybody to check out. I mean, just got to get a hold of Underground Paranormal Network and check out the place they have. That's amazing. You know that brick is is original from that building, and that building is dated 1885. And yeah. and and, and, and I, they, sources say it's dated earlier than that, and it was dated in the mid 1700s. And that is and it's incredible. You know certain things that you can get, and the energy is attached to them. It's really cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's just. I don't mean to. Um, I don't mean to go off topic here, but Dennis, on your screen, on on your right hand side, it looks like it's a black and white photo. And to your left, it looks like it's like in the present. <laughs> it's something very strange going on over there. Yeah, I'm sure. I believe it, man. I believe it. I, why? Why do you think I do the? Why do you think I do the show down here in the basement with my haunted objects? I like to, yeah, I like to, you know, because I never know what's going to happen, and everybody can watch and see, you know. I mean, it's could like be a black and black white on one side. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Shit. Well, I right. you did it from right behind you, Dennis. It's really freaking cool. <laughs> I like that. And what's that? What's that circular thing that hanging on the wall there? Next to the. It's oh, to that's the. Yeah. yeah, it's an African, uh, it's an African ritual mask. Oh, oh, cool. Yeah. That's pretty good. I'm looking at yeah. it. I'm, I've been looking at that. It's been catching my eye. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. There's no, reasons you can catch your eye on certain things. And that, and that mirror behind you, I was mentioning about black mirror. This one here will not let me have one. I want one so bad. I've been that is actually that is actually a dowel, like a dowel. Um, you put a dowel up to it it's like a little makeup table for a dowel but the thing is is it's known to have the drawers open on its own well that's cool that you have that in there because it gives the dolls something you know to go to you know yeah. rather than, you know exploring the whole house you give them something to entertain them while they're in that environment i say yeah. you know I'm gonna keep the you, you know your room there contained it's going to keep everything contained in there so you have oh, items yeah. Suit them. Sorry. But this is like the biggest mirror we have. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. It's the biggest mirror we have. It's got a female attached to it. Jamie already knows the ideas. I mean, I, um, I love mirror scrying. I've been scrying a little bit. I, I haven't done it really much here lately this year, but. Yeah. 
Yep, this is the it biggest mirror we have. It's said that it's known to be a portal, but it's hard to say, really. I, I, um, I, I, I don't know. You know who? You know who Adam is? You know Adam? Adam. Which Adam? Yeah, he's Which a Adam? medium. Adam, he's a medium. You know who he is? Adam. I know so many Adams. We know so many Adams. Oh, okay. He's on the uh, uh, okay. I can't say. I think it's SPWI. Not oh, sure. you're fine. I think it's SPWI or SWPI. He his team runs the Dundee um investigations. Oh. Oh, okay. He uh, he's a good friend of mine. He's a good friend yeah. of mine. And um, he, uh, black medium. Yeah. yeah. He uh he came over and um, did a reading one time on my on on my collection. And he uh and a funny story. I was sitting in a chair next to him and no joke. No, this is no joke, man. I was starting to get this burning sensation in my uh lower like left kidney area in my back and i said adam i said can you check and see make sure i didn't get scratched or something you know and adam's like here let me connect and see who it is and what they're doing well it was actually one of the females that's attached to my dow was pinching me to get me to move because wow. she wanted to talk to adam right I was like, dang. So I moved. It's pretty you cool. Know. Yeah. So, but yeah. Oh, yeah. We love, I, I love my haunted collection and it's going to get bigger. And pretty soon I'm going to have to find a place to put them. Great so, right. for something that we do in our field. That That's one yeah. of them. Is a haunt, me being a collector, rather it be an item that's historical or haunted. I mean, yeah, it, it's amazing the history that yep. they bring and, yeah. and that you, that I can they can show to anybody that would enter your residence or anything as of that. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I bring some I bring somebody in here and show them, and they've never really witnessed anything as of that. And I go and show them my case and from certain places I've been to. And oh yeah, I have I have friends come over and they're like, "Can I see your collection?" And we can take them downstairs. And as soon as they hit the door, they're like, Whoa. This room is full nothing, of energy. Nothing should right. be forgotten about, and spirits shouldn't be forgotten about. Loved ones yeah. shouldn't be forgotten about. No item should be forgotten about. And that's that's why I like bringing these items home with me is because I don't want certain aspects of its history to be forgotten about, like the Puffer House. The owner said, take anything you want. We found a 1920s license plate back in the back silo in the backyard. He's going to tear it down. He's going to yeah. tear it down. It's the oldest house between um, Fife Lake and uh, Kalkaska. And you got to understand that there's a few other towns in between there. And this house is built in 1887 yeah. by Lester, Lester, Mr. Aza Lester Puffer. And um, he, had a, he had a very tragic life, I mean, and, and everything. So uh, he... Uh, <laughs> I, we were able to get some of these items and bring them home with us, and and it was really cool. It was really nice. It was really cool. Sorry, we got kids getting ready to go in bed. Oh, you're fine. Hey, I got two boys myself. Don't feel – hey. There's hey. Amy's grandkids. Don't worry. I got kids, man. No big deal. I got kids. David's got kids. We understand. We understand what parents. You know. Well, yeah, I mean, these right – back, guys. It was pretty okay, cool. No problem, the place because there was uh, where I was gonna get as the 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 location was tore down. It was a beautiful home, beautiful beautiful house, and and it had to be. It, it was tore down, and um, and we were able. I was able to gather these items, and these items will never be forgotten about because I know I got some part of that location that I can show anybody else. And like I say, that's what's gonna keep. I say the area at bay is because it's never going to be forgotten about. Yeah. It's, respect. yeah. it's a lot of respect. I have a lot of respect for every location we go to. It's a must. And, and you're going to get activity if you show them respect. 
And I mean, I, there, in certain standpoints, I mean, you gotta understand where to where the um, where the continue on when you, if you do get into a demonic situation, know when it when the right time is to uh, get away or anything else. Thanks, Richard. We really appreciate it. We're having fun tonight too. <laughs> Yeah, man. No, that's cool. That's cool. I, I like that, you know. And again, you're more welcome to come down to Toledo and come over and, you Sweet. know, Sweet. come and see the collection. I have no problem with that. Awesome. You know? we I have no problem with that. Yeah. <laughs> you're more welcome to come down here and, you know, see what you guys can get activity wise. Because I always wonder, like, like, what if someone else's energy sat in here for a while? Like, what would happen? Because if you ever notice, like, with haunted objects that, you know, I don't know if you ever come across this, like, this situation where, you know, you get someone that goes to, like, a Goodwill, right? They buy this Dow. They're sitting there saying, oh, wow, you know, this plate's flying. I'm being touched. I'm seeing shadows, this and that, that and this. And then you get the object. Right. And none of those claims are real. But yeah, you're still getting like EVPs, maybe a few knocks. And I tell people, I'm like, it's your energy that they feed or feel on to know what kind of, you know, what kind of, uh, what they can do. If you're a fearful person, they're going to amp it up for you because they can feed all that fear. I, I say, you know, if you are walk into a location, you should never walk in with fear. Uh, but but then again, it's kind of easier said than done. Because I mean, if you, I mean me, you watch all of our broadcasts. I <laughs> when when I when I kind of get creeped out by something, it's serious. I mean, I'm not yeah. gonna be fake about it because, uh, like I say again, you know, I'm a I'm I'm not a skeptic, but um, and especially with Jamie, Jamie can get a little bit upset with me because she, she she's a clairvoyant, yeah. and and um, I I have got kind of skeptical with her in the past, but I'll tell you what, I've become a believer with her in a lot of our investigations because she is extremely gifted and to, <laughs> and I, and so once I've started, you know, believing in her, um, a lot of things, you know, kind of like uh, really opened my eyes out to a lot of things when it comes to psychics and all that stuff. And I've become a firm believer a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, never can a location with fear because they'll feed off of it and they'll intensify things. You're correct. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, like, activity is based on person to person. Mm -hmm. Pixelated. You, know, you, may, you may get one thing, and if I go and investigate, I may get another. You know what I'm saying? It varies on day, time, weather, full moon or not, and what kind of energy you have. Mm -hmm. And, and, and especially if it's residual, because residual happens maybe at a certain time and day or whatever. Yeah, I was going to say, your end kind of got a little bit pixelated, and it just got clear, more clear. Hold up. Did you hear a female go, mm-hmm? No, I didn't. I wasn't paying attention. I just heard a female go, mm-hmm. I swear to God, I just heard a female go, mm -hmm. His camera move is David. <laughs> What that? What happened? <laughs> the camera's like okay. still wrong, then it's still moving. I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> I had to take the uh, baby upstairs, put him in his crib. Okay. <laughs> so, so Dan was talking about how um, Jamie's a clairvoyant, and how she, and how he respects her more. And then I was like, well, you know, enter, you know, enter. Uh, you know, certain thing. you know, buildings, haunted objects, you know, it's based on person to person with energy and activity. And then David and then Dan goes, you're kind of pixelated. Then before that happened, I heard a female go. Mm -hmm. Huh? Really? Yeah. No joke. I heard the female. Did anyone else hear that female was watching? It was like a female. It went. Mm -hmm. You'd have to replace. Have to go back and watch. I want to say around. Yeah. You want to play the broadcast because the, the live broadcast is one thirty four twenty. You might want so to. you want to play from one twenty five to. Yeah. Yeah. One twenty five. You play it back from one twenty five and watch it for all the way to one thirty, 
See what you got. Gotcha. There. I'll do have yeah. to do that. You too. You do it too, Dan. Oh uh, yeah, I will do that. I'll definitely will. Yeah, that, that's so cool that you said that. Yeah, I heard a female go. Mm -hmm. A lot of times that happens when you're not paying attention and there's chatter. Yeah, yeah I swear, I heard a female. I don't know if it was on my end or your end. Because <laughs> we both have haunted objects. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like I say, a lot of my items, I don't know if there's a lot of, of activity, but I do know the confirmed one, Emma, that I had shown you in the first part of the podcast. Well, um, she's the only one I know. Might be mine. I wonder I if it was from my end. I wouldn't doubt it. It was your end. It had to be on your yeah. end. I, I, it was really weird. So, but it was pretty cool. Yeah, it is. So, anyway. So, Dan, you tell everyone how they can read you, buddy, and how they can follow your page, and and if they need to get a hold of you for any kind of service or anything, you know. Well, um, you yeah. can check us. You know, we have um, – we have uh, Facebook. We you can check us out on Facebook. We're usually more engaged on Facebook than anything. Um, but you, but a lot of people get our um, our group page and our Facebook page mixed up. So if you go on Chair Capital Shadow Seekers, that's where we go live on. Um, you can message us there if if there's any clients in our local area or anywhere in the state of Michigan. Reach out to us on Facebook Messenger, and we'll be able to get back with you as soon as possible. We we do message quite quickly when we get messages over to face on Chair That's Capital Shadow Seekers. Our fans page and our fans page is public pair connection. Chair Capital Shadow Seekers public pair connections. You can also reach reach out to us. Oh, sweet. We know. Yeah, I know Rebecca. Rebecca. Rebecca I know Smosh. Rebecca. Yeah. She's so cool. Yes. Uh, yep. We. Uh, you can also reach out to us on Instagram. We do have an Instagram page, but we, I mean, we really don't engage a whole lot on Instagram, but I do check the messages and I will respond back. I will be posting more on Instagram soon, but we just got TikTok as well. My son, my son said, mom, you got to get on TikTok. And oh I was like, well, I was kind of like, uh, so, but we didn't do anything stupid part. to it. We don't have, we don't have the comments turned mm -hmm. on for one. And for two, we I didn't do anything to the, to the video. So all we're doing is taking our Facebook lives and pushing some of it over onto TikTok just to get, you know, I, and it's, and it's successful because we're not taking music and adding music and crap and like that to our videos and right, stuff. We're right. just taking real stuff and putting it on there. Trying to explain yeah. it. And the social media platform a little bit. Yeah, I David. Have, um, David's have, doing TikTok. I have quite a few of uh, paranormal clips on my TikTok. I've got over two thousand followers. I'm able to go live and all that good stuff. Whenever we go to a location, like sometimes, like I go TikTok live. Only had it for about a week, so so we're getting there. But like I said, we don't we don't we do the same thing you do. We don't like. We don't do all that crazy, you know, making it spooky. So <laughs> <laughs> it'll probably be me or Trevor. Or Trevor, yeah. We'll have Trevor do them. <laughs> but yeah, it's just to maybe expand, you know, people watching us and stuff, mm -hmm. and maybe learn some new, meet some new people, learn some right. new things. Uh, um, um, you can also, I mean, you can email us at ccss.chaircapital at gmail dot com. Yep. Um, we, we, we like purchasing paranormal equipment from investigators that build them and we like using them. Yeah, I mean, it's cheaper and it's not just that. I, I just feel respect. I, I feel like production line stuff doesn't work as good as an actual investigator who's out there making stuff and knowing how it works. Correct. Right. And there's a lot of, a lot of. A lot of um, items that we have tested as well as apps. I mean, we actually help help um help dave miller with his anomalies app and all that stuff and you know it's pretty cool to have that we beta tested residual mm -hmm. and yeah but anyways uh those that's pretty much our platforms that you can if we have our youtube channel check us out chair capital shadow seekers on youtube we got we try to post a lot of videos on there um as much as we can i we'll have two forward. questions okay <laughs> Number one, what's the best piece of equipment that you guys have? Me. 
my senses. Our senses. Yeah. Our senses. It's me for sure, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, 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 like I said, I try to be that protector. I mean, if, if y'all see that, how Ed is with Lorraine. That's pretty much me. And there, there is a couple pictures of me holding Jamie back like this, like. Don't go any further, Jamie. Don't go any right. further. You stay but if there. you have to choose like a piece right. of equipment that's man-made. If um, I could choose any piece of equipment man-made, yeah. Jamie's showing it right now. This is our spirit box. Nice. It's built by Brad Streets. I've it's, actually seen a, a few of those uh, advertised on uh, Marketplace. Actually. These ones are signed by um, Katrina Wyman, Elizabeth Saint. Dave Schrader and Nick Groff. And this is also cool. used on Paranormal Lockdown. Nice. Very awesome. And we also have our little portable ink box, our mini ink box, built by um, built by Cody Stafford at um, Supernatural Ink. And um, Underground Paranormal Network has uh, mini ink boxes for sale. It's also called the MIB. Yeah, that's yep. really amazing. I think it works better than the PSB7 and the PSB11. In nice. my eyes. I recommend any team to reach out to Austin Manor. And it's portable. It's only like this big. You can just carry it around with you and move around with it. And it's just, cool. I mean, if anybody's interested in them, check check out um, Underground Paranormal Network. Austin Maynard runs it. And um, okay. tell tell them that Chair Capital Shadow Seekers sent you, sent you guys their way. Because uh, it helps with Austin. I've talked to Austin. Yeah, uh, yeah. We're. Part, I don't know if you guys know this, but we're part of. We're proud of Underground Paranormal. Yeah, we we it work with under. We been. Years. Yeah, we've been with Underground Paranormal Network for two years. We help them with their events and stuff like that. We work with them. It's amazing. Okay. Amazing. Cool. amazing. They got they got an event coming up on July thirty first. Um, Detroit Six Precinct. De Detroit Six Precinct Jail. We're gonna be there. We've been there twice. That's we've awesome. Been there twice. We have come back, that, but yeah, come back July thirty first. We got nothing to do. We yeah, see ya. We got lots of coffee and donuts coming too, guys. We got lots Jamie, of sponsors. <laughs> Jamie, Jamie got the coffee there. Jamie, Jamie is the one that got the coffee. Yep. <laughs> she did an amazing job. She worked her ass off trying to get a coffee, coffee um thing going coffee there. Vendors, yeah. Coffee yeah, vendors. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be putting that episode together for our YouTube series here soon for Detroit Six, and we got some really yeah. good activity. So you're gonna have to watch that. Seriously, yeah. we got some really awesome activity there. Twice. That's sweet. So, There's plenty of yeah. platforms to get a hold of us on, but like I said, we engage more and we get a hold of, I mean, it seems like our clients and everybody else reaches us, reaches out to us more on, on Facebook. Cherry Capital right. Shackers on Facebook. Just yeah, send us some Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Yeah, the, uh, sec the, the uh, second question, Um, it doesn't pertain to this, but uh, how many push-ups can you do? <laughs> I don't even want to answer that, man. I'm so upset. I haven't worked a real good job in like a year. I've been waiting for my buddy, my my Vietnam vet buddy in Kingsley, to get a hold of me and say, "Hey, man, we got a couple roofs to do." There you go. <laughs> I, I, he, 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 that. he asked you that because you're white. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I had to say it. You set yourself up for that. Um, <laughs> um, uh, what was I gonna say? No, I think I think we'll have to do something together, investigate a location together. Uh, Dan and Jamie, we'll have to coordinate. You know, get together, investigate. Sounds Just good. For fun. Just for fun, I'm not gonna come up. I'm not gonna, you know, film or anything for a series or anything. Just to come up and film. Come up and film. Sounds good. Just come up and investigate. Because <laughs> Maggie keeps bugging me. She's like, "Can we just investigate for fun once in a while? I don't want to film." <laughs> right. I'm like, just do your thing. Whatever is, makes you happy. Yeah. Whatever makes you comfortable. Yeah. She's just thing. like we. She's like, I want to investigate for fun once in a while. I'm like, okay, well then. So we'll have to coordinate that for where sure. we can. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to coordinate that. So we have lots but, of um, 
And you guys haven't even met our other guy on here who's just like a George Carlin for real. Oh, he yeah. George Carlin reincarnated. <laughs> he got bit by a tick, so he couldn't be here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know what he was doing, but yeah, it, it bit him in the head. And yeah. um, he had to dig it out. So, I mean, I don't know what's going on, but he's has been fri- feeling for a while. So. Yeah. Dang. Mm-hmm. Ain't fun to get nailed and get bit in the noggin, man. Well, they're barely so, they're really oh. bad up here. I don't know how they are down there where you're at, but up here in Michigan, holy! Just, sh- and we don't you don't even have to have large, you know, mm-hmm. tall grass and stuff to have them back. Yeah, you don't even we don't yeah. even have, to have tall grass here. It's just because of the way how it dries. But <laughs> dang, that's crazy. So, well, anyway, we thank you guys for coming on and talking to me and David. This has been fun, hey, guys. For real, with some great laughs. Maybe you want to interrogate them anymore. Sounds good. Um, no, I'm good for okay. today. You good for today? You ain't gonna yeah. ask him how many sit ups he does, how many miles he runs. Just checking. Um, do you happen to have a uh, a Fitbit? <laughs> I knew it. I'm old. I'm old. I knew it. Much too. I need upgrade. So, uh, so uh, how many steps do you take in 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 a day? Too many. <laughs> well, right now, mine. Three thousand four hundred forty-eight. Haven't done but, anything today. Don't. But usually, usually when I've when I've working on a on a good day, I'll, I'll get over fifty thousand. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, there you the go. same way with me. Once I'm mm-hmm. working on a working at work on a good day, I'll get about over ten thousand steps. It's just. I'm back back and forth all day working at the UPS. Right now, I'm currently unemployed, but after the 4th of July, I'm going to be seeking a job. I'm going to be getting back in the the grocery store I was at. So, I mean, I'm going to be getting back in there. I I left on great terms at the grocery store there, and um, I'm going to be getting into a different location, closer to home, instead of driving 45 minutes into Kalkaska, you know, back and forth. I mean, it it, it took a and a lot of a lot of car maintenance on that too, wearing tear on the vehicle. So getting into a location closer to home would be great. And yeah. then that I'll be getting my three thousand steps in. <laughs> there you go. Awesome, awesome. So all right, man. Thank you for coming on and talking to me. And thank David you guys. And, uh, we appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, we had a blast and uh we'll definitely get together <laughs> and uh Investigate <laughs> once or just for fun. Just for fun. We ain't just filming. Fun. Just for fun. Yeah, just for fun. That sounds great to yeah. me. I like having fun. fun. All right. Awesome. All right. Have all a right. great Thank you. Hey. You're welcome. Right. It's good seeing you guys. Nice seeing you too, guys. Right. Thank you. Thank yep. you, David. Thanks, yeah. guys. You have a good night, okay? Yep. yep. You have a good night. Later. Okay. All right. What about so? There were, well, that was fun. Um, yeah, that was fun. I they, uh, uh, Dan and damn, I just had a brain fart. Uh, <laughs> my my brain just like freaking farted. Uh, but yeah, that was fun. I I like having them on. They were fun. We'll definitely have to coordinate somewhere we can investigate with them. Right. Just but um, on on a more serious note, but still, I mean, looking at your camera, like. On the right hand side of you, it looks like it's black and white, and then uh-huh. on the left hand side of you, it's like in color. Yeah, it's like very I gotta go weird. back and listen. I gotta go back and listen for that female. Mo- that female. I swear yeah. to God, I heard it. it Did you like, say around like one twenty, like one thirty? Yeah, watch it from one twenty five to about one thirty five. You'll hear a female okay. goes. Hmm. Yeah. Huh. That's why it's I do these. Weird, that's so. why I do. That's why I do these down here because of the paranormal activity. Because you never know what you're gonna get. <laughs> right. You know, you just never know. And Maggie said it's a great back backdrop. <laughs> it is. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Mine too. Look, I have hot sauce and a baby bottle. That's awesome. I hope you ain't pouring the <laughs> hot sauce in the baby bottle because that would suck. No. Your, just never your baby back be, in the dude, your baby be farting fire, dude. <laughs> yeah, probably. You probably, some, you probably roll some marshmallows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, man, now I got to book my set. My, we got to book the next one. 
So what do you think about bringing Ed on next Sunday? I think that that would be fantastic. You think so? And I actually have a lot of ideas to okay. go along with the show, kind of like okay. what I'm trying to do with with Ed. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we'll coordinate that with Ed and see if he wants to come on, and we'll see if we can get Ed on next Sunday. Yeah, that sounds very awesome. Very, very awesome. Yeah. And okay. uh, he can probably get some uh, some uh, help through here as well. Yeah, exactly. Which would be cool. Right. Yeah. Okay. We'll see what we can do. We'll reach out to him, see if he's got time next Sunday at 8 o'clock to come on. That's if he doesn't have his kids. Hopefully not. Yeah, hopefully not. <laughs> so I'll reach out to him as soon as we get off, see what he says. All righty. All right. Sounds good. All right, man. I'll, t- I'll talk later. to you later. And, and everyone who's watching, man, we appreciate it. Appreciate the love and the support, man. Everyone, thank you. Um, yes. Stay continue tuned. Watching. Yeah, stay tuned because we're going to have more guests on. And and uh, me and Dave are having a ball doing this, man. Like, <laughs> Hey, Dennis, how are. many push-ups did you do? Who, me? Zero. <laughs> Not going to lie. Not going to lie. <laughs> I think I, I I think I did more push ups to my face speeding than I did <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> right. That's great. That's funny. So all right, man. Let hey, let me know if you hear that female voice after we get done here. When you go back oh, yeah, and watch I will. it. I'm about to watch it right now. Yeah. So all right. You have a good night. I'll I'll reach out to you, okay? Later, guys. All right, everyone. Everyone have a good night. Talk to everyone later. Peace. Yo.